I know what it's like to be the other, to be outside and to have no one to call community. So what you're doing here is going to change lives. It's going to build friendships and um, we're really, really grateful for that. So we hope to be done by 3.30 because it is Saturday and I'm like, am I driving to work today? Because I can like we literally see the building that I work in and I'm like, oh gosh. But I'm here because I want you all to know what to do next and how to meet students. So um, our agenda that we're gonna cover today, the next slide please, Ben, thank you. So we're gonna cover vision and goals, responsibilities and expectations, meeting with your student, communication, and then Sharon's gonna come up and do bridging cultural differences, activities, role limitations, and small group discussions. So, and those will be at your table. So bear with us. We want to make sure that um, this is helpful to you and if you have questions, as I said. So let's get started with vision and goals. So um, the program itself is a mentorship program, but really um, I see it as a friendship program. You are the link that this student has to a friendly face in the community. Um, they many times uh, the students silo themselves into their cultural communities. We have a gigantic Chinese population and gigantic Indian student population, and then the rest um, it just really small populations from all around the world. So you can see that um, it'd be really easy for a Chinese student to come to Tempe, Arizona, and only know other Chinese students for four years or whatever. So we wanna make sure that they have an opportunity to meet people who live in America, who identify as American or identify as um, someone from Tempe or someone from Scottsdale. So next slide, please. Um, so our you know, uh, actual um, code of whatever is to, um, to provide opportunities for AS national students to develop friendships with local Arizonans and to gain a better understanding of the life in the United States. This is not a homestay program, and some people would be like, aw, but most people would be like, thank God. <laughs> um, so we want to let you know that your, your responsibility is for friendship, not for you know, paying for anything for your student who's your you know, mentee or for providing housing for them. That is, not, uh, that is not an acceptable role in this program. Next slide, thank you. So what are the goals? Next slide, please. To provide a new international student with emotional, informational, and social support to enhance their intercultural experience. So we have um, two days of international student orientation on August 15 and 16. We so far have 1,300 students signed up for that. And that is just incoming. ASU has about 11,000 total international students on all of their campuses. However, I think it's like in the 90 percentile are on the ASU Tempe campus. So they're physically here <laughs> and they're everywhere. So um, you are a small number and it's a mighty army, but um, he's there and we are marketing to um, our students that are coming incoming about this program. We're doing it through email, we're doing it through um, social uh, activities that promote this program. So we really want the students to know it's available to them. So that's where we're at. Um, responsibilities and expectations, let's roll on. Yeah, next slide please, Ben. All right, so make your student feel welcome. I think you all are really good at that because I don't even know, like I know like one person in here, I mean like really well, and then everybody else I've met maybe once, not everybody, but you guys are really nice and I know this is gonna be awesome. So, no, I mean, welcoming. Like you guys got that down because everybody was like, hi. And I'm like, you don't know me, but this is great. You guys are so nice. So um, I don't think I need to talk about that very long. Kindness can help students overcome feelings of loneliness. So as I was saying, as a foreign student in Dominican Republic, Spain, Argentina, um, it's, it gets lonely. And you may not show it on your face, but when you're at home in your apartment or you're like 
just walking around campus and you don't see anybody you think cares about you, if they just meet with you once a month or twice a month, they know that you care about their well-being and you care about them as a person. And that just really changes their experience for the better. All right, so meet with your student at least twice a semester. That's a low ball number. So I would love for you to meet with them once to twice a month. I mean, twice a month might be pretty heavy expectation, especially if you have a family and children at home or you're oh, very committed in your church or in your community. But um, twice a month does not mean you have to go to a Diamondbacks game and spend five hours with them. Um, meet them on campus, meet them at university Starbucks and for like an hour. And then if you have to go, you have to go. But it's still regular communication and meeting up which is just really what, how you build a relationship, a friendship, so. Um, join the Minotaur. Okay, is there anything, questions about that stuff? I'm flying through stuff, because I know it's pretty intuitive, y'all. Who's done, um, how do I phrase this? Who's done like a friendship or a connection with international students before? All right, so come on, guys. You should have told me this earlier. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm like just talking to the wall. Experts. Okay, so let's actually talk about the technical stuff because I know everyone in here is a millennial or Generation Z, I don't even know. So this platform is not super easy. If you haven't joined yet, this is how you're going to get connected with the student. It's mentoring.asu.edu. So if you have a phone and a camera, you can take a picture of that slide. Or um, if you want to email me, I can email you this PowerPoint presentation. Um, it takes little to no time to set up a profile unless um, you are really, really uncomfortable with computers. And then what you can do is ask someone who's under 30. <laughs> so, I mean... My, my dad sells technology stuff, and he's like, why do you want an Apple Watch? And I'm like, because it tracks things. And if my phone rings, he's like, mm, -mm. and he sells, like, IT stuff. And I'm like, dad, it's cool. Anyway, um, please join the group to connect. Next slide, please. Um, tips, tips for creating your profile. So I have been told um, that when if you don't check a box that says make me only visible to the Sun Devil Global Connection Group, other mentors might be like, hey, so I do research. Do you want to be in my research? Um, that might be like awkward and not what you want. Yeah. I apologize. Thank you. Mentorship. Make a note. I apologize, thank you so much. Um, I didn't click on that link in this PowerPoint slide, so. All right, so yeah, be mindful of what boxes you check to make your account visible. This is like social media. So it is a profile and visibility and privacy or something you wanna consider. So if you click that box that says only make me visible in the group, obviously you'll only be visible to the other mentors in the group and the students in the group. If you're affiliated with a student organization or outreach, put that as your first and current experience. I have examples. That's my terrible French. I don't even speak French. I don't know why I'm saying that. Like, I speak Spanish. And anyway, people are, oh, thanks. Good, I got support. Support. All right, next slide, por favor. Okay, so who's that guy? All right, thanks, Charles, for volunteering your most awesome platform images. Okay, so see how Charles put as his first experience his organization? If you are not part of a student organization or an organization, that's fine. If you're just a um, professional who learned about this through your church community or through your um, faith community, that's cool, too. Um, but this helps the student know that you're at least affiliated with ASU in some way. So they're not like, who is this person, you know? So please use the organization that you know that's part of who you are. And then you can list your professional life and all those goodies or if you have special hobbies 
like playing a conch shell. Have you ever seen someone do that? Okay, next one, sorry. All right, so that is microscopic. Oh, this is just more information. This is how Charles laid his out. Thanks, Charles. <laughs> um, so this is what it looks like from the student side, like when a student looks at your profile. Next slide, please. And there's some more of it. So you can build that out as much as you want or keep it as simple as you want. Um, the, the glory of this is that it is student initiated. So they have to reach out to you. It's kind of like Bumble, okay, I'm outing myself. I've been on online dating apps and that's where the female reaches out. But anyway, the student can only message you initially. Okay, so um, you're just out there like, hey, I'm awesome and I just want to give you my love. And they're like, mm, swipe left. Just kidding. Um, just kidding. They're going to be like, yes, hello. So what we're doing as the National Student Scholar Center is we're teaching the student on how to reach out to you. So we're telling them it might be possible. Um, you can always ask how to pronounce people's names. Um, it's, and yeah, I, I ask all the time and I um, ask people who's native English speakers because I forget their names. So <laughs> yeah, I'm in, you know, people work and I forget people's names, but God gives me grace. Okay, next one. Um, student schedule. So um, yeah, the, the, res the responsiveness in different cultures can vary and it can also just depend on the person. So always send a text message the day before and then the morning of, like we still meeting tomorrow? Okay, and then the, the morning of, oh, I'll see you at Starbucks at 5 p.m. And that's just something that, um, I mean, we're doing our best, you wanna meet with them, they wanna meet with you, but they might get distracted and you know, be playing a game of polo and you know, so it's going to end up very busy. So, yeah, I, I mentor two high school students, and I would hope that college students would be more responsive and able to show up at the right time, but just uh, give them a lot of grace. <laughs> All right, next slide. Um, transportation. Most of the international students do not have a car or access to one. So this is a commitment to be within walking distance of their place of living or of um, ASU campus, or to agree to meet somewhere they can take the light rail to or something like that because they have bikes and sometimes they don't have a bike, but they have those cool scooters, which like terrify me and must run over me every day. So, oh, and those electric um, skateboards. Who's almost been hit by an electric skateboard? <laughs> I'm like, why aren't you wearing a helmet? Okay, um, keep in mind that in certain countries, seatbelts are not required. So continually remind them to wear their seatbelt, especially in the back seat. So um, if they ride with you. Um, yeah, and make sure you have insurance. I have to say these things, I'm so sorry. <laughs> All right, next slide, please. Um, also keep in mind they are super low budget. Many of our, okay, so international student tuition is 2.5 times that of an in-state student. So um, they're living, and they're also used to living in large communities, so you might have um, four or five Indian students in a two-bedroom apartment, and that is normal and actually enjoyable living, so it's also really affordable. So, um, and that's kind of like the dorms, like four people to a two bedroom suite dorm room, you know, so that's, that's pretty normal. Um, so think about affordable options, and Sharon's gonna talk a little bit about activities, um, meeting for coffee, they just want a relationship. You don't have to do something. You don't have to go to like, as you wish, pottery, which is crazy expensive, I don't know why. Um, you can just go to Starbucks, and there, yeah, and talk. Okay, next one, please. Pets, um, so in a lot of countries, um, it just depends, um, pets might not be the norm. Um, so if you do have an animal, make sure that you keep the animal contained in another room if the student comes to your home, or that if you meet at a park you, and you have a dog and it likes to jump, that you not bring the dog the first few times and that you make sure with this student, because they might be too polite to tell you that they're afraid of your dog. So 
even if it's a small dog, uh, like even a chihuahua, like animals um, in some countries are not, they just run wild and bite people and it's scary. All right. Um, availability, they have more time on the weekends and early in the semester, during holidays, during semester and spring breaks. Um, many times, um, if they've made American friends, the American friends all go home and they don't have anywhere to go. So be mindful of that, that you're available. If you're available, they would, they would be available to see you in their breaks. And, or they're traveling constantly. So evenings and weekends um, because of class schedules. But maybe their class schedule is that they have every Thursday morning off and you have a flexible work schedule or you're retired and you can meet them at 11 a.m. on Thursday. So just talk to them and find out what is the best for them. And next slide, please. Um, communication, is that what you sure? All right, cool. Um, so build and maintain a strong relationship with a student, so regular communication. Next one. Um, if you have difficulty getting together, um, so even if, this is for any friend, you don't see all your friends regularly, you send them a text and you say, hey, how's it been going? I've been thinking of you. This applies to international friends. <laughs> and then, um, all right, next one. So local world news, food, sports, hobbies, mutual interests, local entertainment, just conversation starters, pretty much anything, just keep asking questions. Imagine you have a 15-year-old teenage daughter and she sits in you, next to you in a car. What do you ask them? So what did you do at school today? Work. You know, and just keep asking questions until it builds. I'm not saying it's gonna be that difficult because they're actually quite eager to know about you and what you do and they'll ask you specific questions, so. Um, more conversation topics. I'm not gonna insult your intelligence by reading them aloud. Um, taboo topics, many times are religion and politics, although I have found that people ask me about my faith or about um, my political views. So my goal, if I am asked, so I don't bring up those topics, but if I, I, they are brought up to me, I, my role is not as anything other than this is what I believe and this is how I practice it. This is my political beliefs and um, so it's not an argument or persuasion in any way, it's just the reality. And so they're interesting to them because it might be different from how they experience politics in their home country. So if they ask about it, you're welcome to talk about those topics, just let them initiate them. All right, my job is done, <laughs> just kidding. Come and find me, ask me questions afterwards. Thank you, Sharon. Well, hello again. Okay, we're gonna be talking about some really fun stuff. Cultures. How do we bridge the cultural differences between us individualistic Americans and people from cultures who typically like to do things in groups? So, um, Joanna, could you go to the next slide? So when you meet a student for the first time, often they will bring you a gift. That's just a customary action that they have in their country, is to bring you a gift. Um, it would probably represent something from their culture, and of course, thank them for it. Um, but you don't wanna be giving your student too many gifts because you don't want that student to think, oh, they keep giving me these things, so maybe I can ask them to buy me a new computer, right? As you continue to give gifts, it makes them think that you're taking on some type of financial responsibility for them. Going Dutch, A-A-J-I. A-A-J-I is going Dutch in Chinese, um, in Cantonese, and um, you want to explain to the student if you are going to go Dutch with them. Otherwise, they're going to expect for you to pay because you invited them. You've got the age. You've got um, the friendship part. So they're going to expect that you will be paying unless you talk with them about that you're going Dutch. 
and they may not know what going Dutch is, you will have to explain it to them. Ask them what is it in their culture? How do they call it in their culture? Um, when you do something with a student, you want to make sure that they understand their financial commitment for what you're going to do. If you're going to go to a concert and you invite them to go with you, you need to know that if they're going to pay for their own ticket, if they need money for water, if they need money for snacks, if you take them to um, the zoo or any other place like that, help them understand what their financial responsibility in it's going to be. Speaking. Some students struggle with American accents. Can you imagine that? Yeah, okay. So, we need to speak clearly. We need to slow down. We don't need to talk louder. That's not going to help them understand, right? Sometimes when people first meet international students, they talk louder to help the student understand what they're saying, but that doesn't help. Slowing down, taking your time, Try not to use slang. If you listen to yourself, okay, do an example for today. The rest of the day, as you talk, think about how much slang that you use. And every time you think, you hear yourself talking slang, think, an international student is not going to understand what I just said. I put my foot in my mouth, right? All different kinds of slangs that we use every single day that the students don't understand. Authority. So authority is very important in the cultures, and that kind of goes back to the sense of you inviting them, they think you're going to pay. So um, they may not know how to address you, so you can talk about that. Do you want them to call you, you know, Ms. Owens, or do you want them to call you Sharon? So they're going to probably ask what they should call you. And it's up to you. That's your choice. But in a lot of countries, in any type of relationship like that, they're going to be expected to be very formal. And we don't want to be formal. We want to be their friend. OK, next slide. Food. OK. So first week on campus, they're eating American food, something that is totally foreign to them. All they want is a bowl of rice, OK? Um, <laughs> but for some students, they have cultural traditions. Um, so that may mean not eating something. Maybe they're a vegetarian. Um, so you always want to check with your student if they have any dietary concerns. You know, pick around it. Um, but don't be insulted by that. They're in a learning process. They're in an adjustment process. So, activities. What kind of activities do you think you'd like to do with your student? So, you want to keep in touch with your student, and you want to practice hospitality. And whatever you do with them, you don't want it to be really formal, OK? Um, you want to do just something that maybe you and your family are going to do, or something that you enjoy doing. Include the students in something that you're already doing and let them be a part of that. One of the things I um, do is I'm going to Costco. Anybody want to go to Costco with me? Okay. Students from Taiwan have Costco in their country. So <laughs> they're like, yeah, I want to go to Costco. <laughs> you know? Um, so all different kinds of things that I do as an individual, I invite students to do with me. But other activities that you can do with students, you could have a barbecue or grill burgers in your backyard, um, do a sport activity. Maybe you have a child who is in a sports team and invite them to go and watch the game with you. Um, when my children were younger, I would invite students to go watch their Christmas program, um, their plays that they were involved in. Get them involved in your culture, your life. Um, and so lots of other things. Movies, board games, and of course, going out for coffee. What you don't want to do with them are things that are dangerous, okay? 
water sports. We don't want anybody getting hurt, okay? A lot of them may not even swim well, much less trying to take them out to learn how to water ski. Fishing would be okay, that's a whole different thing. Um, but you know, learning how to use a firearm, which most of them probably have never even seen a firearm. Um, skydiving, oh, that's really exciting. Um, but let's not encourage our international students to do that. Uh, as the university, and as partners with the university, we don't want to put the students in a position where they could get hurt, and then that, in turn, hurts the university's reputation. Cooking. If you offer for a student to come to your home and cook, they will be so excited, especially if they live in the dorms. First, they want to eat something that they're familiar with something that they know how to cook, typically the girls, but a lot of the guys know how to cook too. And it's a special treat for you to learn more about their culture. And for most people, I think that you know, when you eat authentic food from a certain country, it tastes totally different than the you know, local restaurant of that culture. So you get a chance to have some really quality food. Okay. So, share your culture with them, share your family life with them, share your time and energy, and have fun. You will have so much fun with your students because, um, in a sense, they're um, very open, they're excited, they're willing to try new things, um, and they want to learn as much about our culture as they can while they're here. Next slide. So what are the limitations of the role? Well, you don't have to be financially responsible for the student. You're not going to pay their rent. You're not going to buy their textbooks. You're not going to do those kinds of things for the student. You're going to buy them dinner? Maybe. You're going to buy them a ticket to a baseball game? Maybe. That's up to you. But it's not required. And you don't have to be listed as a person for emergency contact. Now, you may want to say, if you run into any troubles and you want help, you can put my number down, I will help you. But that's, you know, your choice to do that. So, meeting with your students, okay? Privately, a male and a female should not meet alone together, unless it's out in public somewhere. We just want to protect the program, protect yourself um, from any misled um, accusations that may come across. Um, if you're going to have people to your home, invite other people. When you talk to your student and you're um, inviting them to your home, ask them to bring a friend. They're going to feel more comfortable if they have a friend with them and you have two students with you. Just don't let them keep talking their native language, right? You have to say, oh, we're going to talk English now. So please meet one-on-one -on -one with students in public location. Overnight. So we would ask that you not take the students out of town overnight with you. That puts the university, puts you in a whole different position for liability issues. Firearms, I kind of talked about that before. Um, but to, if you do conceal a weapon and carry it with you, when you're with an international student, could you please refrain from bringing your weapon with you, just for security reasons? Insurance, make sure you have proper car, home insurance um, that would, you know, cover a student in case there's any problems. Alcohol and drugs. When you're with your students, we would ask that you please don't serve alcohol um, and don't consume alcohol in their presence. Um, a lot of the students, especially the incoming students, are going to be minors. So you don't want to be drinking um, in front of the minors. Um, for many people, drinking isn't even on the table because it's something that you normally don't even do. So, um, of course, don't exp 
expose them to the legal um, drugs or illegal drugs in our state. Um, we want to represent ourselves and the university in positive ways. So don't ever employ your student. Oh, Susie, if you come over and clean my house for me, I'll pay you $50. No. Tommy, if you come over and rake my yard in the fall, I'll pay you $100. No, you don't want to have kind of a relationship with a student where you're giving them money. Um, so babysitting, housework, yard work, um, or even having a student help in a business that you have. Now the students can work, that's through the university, um, and that's all legal when they do it that way. <laughs>